Behind me is the Abbey at Crowland in Peterborough. This was founded by St. Guthlac and it boasts of the earliest ring of bells in England. Eighty years before the Normans arrived, they had a ring of bells here in this church. Furthermore, it has the longest bell ropes in England, 90 feet long from the floor up to the ringing chamber and the bells themselves. St. Guthlac was an interesting character. He started out in life as a soldier, but at the age of 24, he became disillusioned with the army life, threw off his uniform, which in those days was, I suppose, a coat of mail or something, and went back into civilian clothes and set off to become a monk. Eventually, finding that that wasn't good enough, he became a hermit, and seeking the utmost in solitude, he came here to Crowland, where he established himself as a hermit. Today, Crowland is quite a, an attractive little village. Right in the heart of it, you have the wonderful Three Ways Bridge, known as Trinity Bridge, where the stream divided into two, so you had two streams to cross over, and the bridge provided a way of getting across all three bits of water. But when St. Guthlick came here, it was a desolate, muddy island, barely protruding above the surrounding marsh, the surrounding fenland. Of course, this just suited St. Guthlick. Because in those days, people believed that to be close to God, you had to mortify the body, keep it under. And so he subsisted here on little more than a bit of barley bread and muddy water. I suppose he deliberately sought for muddy water in order to show just how pious and holy he was. And the natural result? He got sick. Of course, he didn't know that it was germs. He didn't know anything about things like that. Muddy water was just a means of penance and mortification for him. It carried no overtones of disease and illness. And so he attributed his diseases, his frequent agues and aches and rheumatism to the attacks of demons. And high on the west wall of the abbey, there is a statue of him brandishing the whip given to him in a vision by St. Benedict with which he could chase away the demons. And you can even see the demon standing under his feet that he's uh, driven away. But of course, it, <laughs> demons weren't the cause of his illness and he eventually died of his privations, which is a tragedy that a good man, renowned for his cures, his healing abilities, should have unnecessarily sacrificed his life to what he believed to be the curse of the demons. The sad thing is that there are an awful lot of people still today who don't seem to be able to relate cause and effect. And when they get sick, they often blame God. It's not fashionable to blame the devil these days. Why does God do this to me? Why does God allow this to happen to me? They smoke, they drink, they eat an unhealthy diet, they lead an unhealthy lifestyle, but when they get sick, oh, it's all God's fault. It's not. God loves you. God doesn't want you to be ill. And that is why in the Bible he gave all sorts of good advice about healthy diet, how to live, and if you follow that advice, and if St. Guthlick had followed that advice, well, he wouldn't still be alive today, but he would have lived much longer and more happily here on his island at Crowland. <laughs>